free. But I've mastered that style. It's like the five deadly venoms. So all he had to do was get next to a nigga like that. He could destroy it. Believe in that. Real. We plan to take the same strategy we use with Death Row West. Mind over matter. Taking all our weaknesses and making it into our strength. That all these people talk about an East Coast, West Coast war. They like the Judas was to Jesus. They only here to cause confusion. We here to bring money and to bring change. They here to cause confusion. All these weak rappers, Nas, all these suckers, they battling off of East and West like this is a game. This ain't no game. If this was chess, we'd be yelling checkmate three years ago because we've been beat these It's not a game. What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. The only way for me to come back is as Ego Veli. Now, I had to do this video as Ego Veli. Now, let me start off with this quick disclaimer. I posted the video on my Instagram. There was no watermarks, so unfortunately, I don't know whose interview it was. If you guys know, let me know. I'll definitely give them full credit in the description. But Oscar De La Hoya did an interview with somebody. Again, I'm not sure whose interview it, it was, but I did post it. Make sure you, you check it out if you want to hear it for yourself or whatnot. And I'm going to talk about what he said. Now, this was the type of speech where, have you ever talked to somebody and you don't know what they're going to say and... You're, you're like wondering like what the what could they possibly say and you think it might be crazy but you don't expect it to be that crazy you know what i'm saying you don't expect it to be that like kookamani if you will i gotta use words like kookamani to describe what he said in this interview now we talked about canelo versus triple g or i talked about it on the channel and then i talked to you some of you guys in the comment section um doesn't sound like the fight's happening. It's not happening next. I even made a proposition on my Instagram. And I'm trust me, I'm not made of money or, or anything like that. I'm not Mayweather and Pacquiao. I don't have money like that. But this is how confident I was. And I made a wager. I told everybody I have over 20,000 followers on Instagram. I said, if Canelo fights Triple G next, I will buy three Canelo shirts and then raffle them away, give them away to boxing fans. If he fights them at the true, the full 160, I'll double up and I will get six Canelo shirts, born ready, whatever you guys want him to say or whatever, and I would give them away to boxing fans. But as it sits, it doesn't look like I'll be giving away any shirts because it doesn't look like the fight's happening next. They're talking about, oh, maybe, I don't even know how this even worked, but ESPN Deportes, they did an interview. And it said, based on their sources, basically, they're not fighting next. And this, and I did the bet way before this interview even came out. And the thing is, it said they're not fighting next, most likely. Golovkin will probably fight in March. And then Canelo wants to fight in the May, the quote-unquote Mexican dates or Cinco de Mayo weekend. And it's against other opposition. And then maybe they'll meet in, in September. So it's a big question mark because we don't even know who they're fighting next or if they get past whoever they're fighting next. You know what I mean? Depending on how they match them up. So that's one thing. But then fast forward to this, Oscar De La Hoya said in this video, like, so basically we know Triple G is out of the equation at least for next, you know what I mean? Possibly in September. So fast forward to this interview, this man, Oscar De La Hoya said, you know, who, what fight I wouldn't mind putting together right now in the future, just whenever, Canelo versus, drum roll please, Amir king khan like what what this like i follow oscar's whole career as a fighter and i i, I was a big fan I, I still am a fan of him as a fighter but sometimes he says the wildest things and to match canelo versus amir khan is just it's it sounds blasphemous to me it doesn't make any sense and this is not a knock on amir khan but these are actual facts. Amir Khan is a speedy guy. He's a good fighter. He's an Olympic silver medalist. But the fact of the matter is, Amir Khan has had three welterweight fights. Three. And it hasn't even been against the best opposition. You know what I mean? Like the, the Pacquiao's and the Mayweather. Yeah, he wants to fight them. But point being, he hasn't fought them for whatever reason. It hasn't been against Kell Brook. He hasn't fought Keith Thurman, Earl Spence. You know what I'm saying? He hasn't fought the cream of the crop at welterweight not to mention one of those wasn't even a true welterweight i'm not talking about frame wise i'm talking about they've never acclimated or had a fight at the true 147 and that was chris algeria at the time when they fought he hadn't been fighting at welterweight he fought pacquiao to catch weight and before that he was fighting at 140 so the point being is 
why would Oscar De La Hoya want to match Canelo with Amir Khan, who has limited experience as as a welterweight and not the best. He has a good resume, but not the best resume at welterweight. And you want him to move up to Canelo weight at 155 or something to me that and then stylistically Khan is um, he has one knockout on his his whole resume. And that was to Zab Judah. And, and it wasn't like he knocked him out cold. I'm not talking about TKOs. I'm talking about flush knockout like Roy Jones got knocked out yesterday. I'm talking about Pacquiao Marquez. I'm talking about those types of knockouts. And I understand it's harder to get as you elevate your competition. But point being is um, Amir Khan, as good of a fighter as he is, he's not the most powerful guy. You know what I'm saying? Even the Keith Thurman, I would say, ranks higher in the power. Or Keith Thurman moved up to a catchweight of 152 and got a stoppage over Carlos Quintana. So to me, I don't know what Amir Khan, if his power is decent and good at 147, but not like at the top of the barometer, like Keith Thurman, Earl Spence, Marcos Maidana, Pacquiao, guys like that, then what's him moving up to like a 154, 155? How is that going to benefit him? So to me, stylistically, that fight is a nightmare. And it's like Oscar's trying to get an easy win for Canelo. And I mean, if you're not talking about a welterweight named Manny Pacquiao or Floyd Mayweather, then it makes no sense to even be fighting welterweights to me. You know what I'm saying? Why would Canelo, He, I told you guys this, he came into his last fight with Cotto looking like Super Shredder at the end of Ninja Turtles 2 Secret of the Ooze. The man looked big. His back looked wide as hell. You know what I'm saying? He was, Cotto, he was dwarf, Cotto was dwarfed by the size of Canelo. And Cotto, who's a big puncher, has more experience at weights over 147. He's fought at 154. He fought Sergio Martinez and stopped him at 159. Hurt or not, he did it. You know what I'm saying? He fought Daniel Gill at a catch weight. So clearly, Cotto has more experience. And the man Cotto could not even hurt Canelo. Or it didn't appear that he was able to seriously hurt Canelo in 12 rounds of action. So what is Amir Khan going to do? Yeah, he has a speed and maybe some movement that could trouble Canelo, but that's a bad matchup for Khan. You know what I'm saying? Some people say whatever his chin or whatever, but the bottom line is why are we talking about your prized possession fighting welterweights? And again, if they, if they, if he was going to fight a welterweight, it should be like a Pacquiao Mayweather because those are big money fights. And those guys have the talent level, the experience to fight bigger guys. You know what I'm saying? Period. I don't really remember a time where Amir Khan was fighting guys who were like 15, 20 pounds bigger than him on fight night. You know what I'm saying? He got the people that stopped him were about his size or smaller. Danny Garcia, Bradis Prescott, you know what I mean? Fights like that. Julio Diaz dropped him. Those guys weren't bigger than him. So to me, that puts Amir Khan at a supreme disadvantage if he were to move up to 54 or 55 to fight a guy like Canelo, who's a boxer puncher. So it just makes no sense. And then this is the final point. Why would you bypass all the quality fighters in a stacked division at 154 to pursue an Amir Khan? Again, I'm not bashing Amir Khan. This is, this is more, I want to understand the logic behind De La Hoya wanting to see Amir Khan versus Canelo. And by bypass, I mean you got an Edis Landilada rematch, which to me, you could sweep it on the rug and, oh, he ran and he's a marathon runner. Bottom line, the consensus is split down the middle. Some people think Canelo won. I don't. I thought Laura won by a slight margin, like one or two rounds. But the other people think Laura won also. You know what I'm saying? So it, it's split down the middle. Some people think Canelo. Bottom line is there's controversy there. You have to clear the air. When Floyd Mayweather fought Jose Luis Castillo and he had a hurt rotator cuff and there was some controversy, and people were like, nah, Mayweather lost that. He should have lost that. Even though Mayweather got the win, right? He fought him the same year in a rematch and then he shut everybody up. He said, my shoulder's healed. I had the surgery. Shut everybody up and rematched the dude and beat him more decisively to the point where there was no argument. Same thing with Maidana. Some people are like, oh, it was a draw. Floyd got his ass beat. Then the next fight, who did you fight? Marcus Maidana left. Maidana had like one good round at the end of And I don't even know if he won that round. He just clipped Mayweather with a very hard shot at the end of round three or four or whatever it was. I think it was three. And it is like, oh, okay, damn. He really 
clocked him hard. You know what I'm saying? But then he didn't really do much else after that. So Canelo Laura was very competitive. I don't care if you say, oh, he ran and all this stuff. It was competitive. And Laura won some rounds. Canelo won some rounds. Competitive fight. And there's no definitive winner. And again, go to Canelo Laura videos. You'll see people saying Laura won. You'll see people saying Canelo won. You don't really go on Canelo versus Mayweather videos and, and see like intelligent people saying Canelo beat the shit out of Mayweather. You know what I'm saying? With the solid argument. That's my point. So why not a Lada rematch? You know what I mean? Why not even a Trout rematch would be better than fighting an Amir Khan? Southpaw, another guy you had a little bit of controversy with. I thought Canelo beat Trout. That's just my personal opinion. Uh, I didn't like the open scoring, but I thought he won. And I thought um, the open scoring kind of made it to the point where Trout had to fight a style that wasn't really comfortable for him because they had him down by a, a horrible margin. That's my point. And um, there's other guys. You have Demetrius Andrade, six-footer, Olympic background, amateur pedigree. He just got a second-round knockout against somebody. He stepped in there with Vanis Matarosin. That's another person I would love to see Canelo fight. Vanis Matarosin, Willie Nelson, another six-footer with power, pulled an upset on PBC against Harrison. Um, you got talent. You got Julian Williams. You got guys like the Charlo brothers. You know what I'm saying? There's there's too many people that are quality, in my opinion, at 54 to the point where you would have to be like trying to pull people up from welterweight. Even if you did, let's say they had like a welterweight tournament and then you pulled up the whoever won that, that's something different. Or like even if a Kell Brook and Keith Thurman fought, and then whoever the winner was, if they won in a spectacular fashion, and then they moved up, that would still make more sense. But Amir Khan fought Luis Colazzo, Devin Alexander, and Chris Algieri, who wasn't a, a welterweight at the time. And you're talking about pulling him up? What sense does that make? So um, I'm leaning towards the, the Gennady Golovkin They the side. You know what I'm saying? They don't want it with Golovkin. That's one thing. That's an issue in itself. But that's kind of um, disrespectful. That you have a guy with the lineal middleweight belts and you're trying to make the the guy who's considered the best middleweight triple G a guy you, your fighter is sparred with. You want to make him fight at a catch weight, which I, I talked about that. There's a lot of double standards and there's there's both sides are doing little things, A side advantages and stuff. But then on, now on top of that, you don't want to fight Golovkin, but you want to fight Amir Khan and you're a lineal middleweight champion. This, man, this don't make no sense to me. I don't even understand why he would conduct an interview like that. No Golovkin, but we're going to bring Amir Khan up, who probably wouldn't be able to hurt Canelo. How is that a fair fight? You know what I'm saying? Cotto couldn't hurt Canelo, so Amir Khan's going to hurt him. Yes, Amir Khan has the speed, but Amir Khan, he ain't stopped nobody at welterweight. Cotto has, he had like three stoppages in a row before he fought Canelo. You know what I mean? Sergio Martinez, Gil... And uh, Delvin Rodriguez. And those are all at 154 or better. Khan hasn't stopped anyone at 47. You're talking about putting him in there with Canelo. Get out of here. Let me know what you guys think of Oscar's comments. Drop it in the comment section. Make sure you like my video as always. Hate, comment, and subscribe. Till next video, it's Ego signing off. So if you enjoyed this video and want more content like this on the channel, you can show your appreciation by going to the PayPal donate button or the YouTube support button, and you can donate any amount that you feel is equivalent to the value of this video. Much more to come. Thank you guys for your support. Boxing Ego, the future of boxing.